I'm Martin Shaw, the independent East Devon Alliance candidate for Seaton and Collerton. The clinical commissioning group which runs our hospital services across this part of Devon has been denied adequate funding by the government because they've been denied adequate funding. They are trying to cut services. They have a proposal to cut, well it's not a proposal now, it's a decision to cut a very large number of beds across several hospitals in East Devon and to substitute for that a system of care at home which is unproven, which is unlikely to work, especially at night and in rural areas and which puts According to our local GPs, the GPs in Seton and Colleton and the surrounding area are united in saying this system will not work, it is likely to cause harm to our patients and we don't think it should be brought in. So we as the East Devon Alliance, we have been uh, contesting this from the start and uh, one of our independent councillors Claire Wright was the person who proposed that the Devon County Council Health Scrutiny Committee should refer this decision to the Secretary of State. And this is the most concrete thing that's been done so far to stop this decision being implemented. And I picked up on this, very, uh, I've been following Claire's uh, activities and uh, her efforts to protect the health service in this part of the world for some time. And when this decision was announced, I uh, not only supported what Claire had done and asked the Town Council to support it, but I also put forward the proposal that we should seek judicial review of this decision because as it affects Seton, uh, it affects Seton Hospital in a very particular way, all our 24 inpatient beds will be removed. Uh, these are all the beds that are available in the whole of the Axe Valley, so a very large area, a very large population which is being denied service and the decision was made in a way which frankly smells. It, there, there, there is so much uh, that is uncertain and uh, downright dodgy about the, the reasoning behind this decision. The East Devon Conservatives have issued a statement uh, which I think is supported by both the Conservative candidates in the Seton and Colleton area saying that they quote, want to see bedless hospitals uh, adapted to accommodate other health services. So this is, this is what they are saying, they are already embracing the idea of bedless hospitals. And one of their candidates has said that opponents of bed removals should stop hindering progress because bedless hospitals are just part of the evolving NHS which the Conservatives want. I think this, this tells you the underlying thinking of the local Conservatives. Independent East Devon Alliance candidates have done very well in the Seton and Colleton area in the last few years. In the district elections in 2015, we had three of us stood, we got an average of more than 1,100 votes. The Conservatives got an average of around 1,300 votes. And the Liberals and the UKIP, who were also standing, got an average of eight and 600 votes respectively. So, independents, EDA, are clearly the main challengers to the Conservatives in this division. And I think that has been emphasised ever so much in, the recent, in recent weeks, because we have been the ones who have made the running on the opposition to the hospital closure. The other parties really haven't been in the picture. Jim Knight, who has been the Conservative uh, County Councillor for the Seaton Coastal area for Seaton and Beer, uh, has been removed by the Conservatives as their candidate for the new Seaton and Colleton division. And because of that, he has decided to stand as a, quote, independent. But Jim is not independent. He's been a Conservative councillor for decades. He has been uh, sitting with the Conservatives Ever since they deselected him in September, he has remained in the Conservative Party. He has remained a Conservative councillor on both councils. He has voted with the Conservatives on every issue that I'm aware of. The day before 
he announced his independent candidature. He was sitting in the annual budget meeting of Devon County Council with his Conservative colleagues and voting for everything that they proposed and voting against everything which all the non-Conservative councillors proposed. Uh, Jim, Jim is not an independent. You, to, to be independent, you have to show some independence. If elected, I, I would be trying to do two different kinds of things. One would, one would be simply to give uh, professional support to local people who have problems, who have issues. For example, the campaigns which have been run by, very uh, strongly by local residents in Collie Ford and, and Seaton downhill over the last year or two, over the speeding on these roads. Uh, and so far, under the existing town of county councillors, very, very little has been done. The county council has still not addressed issues that were promised to be addressed uh, a year ago. And, and so I think one of the first things I would do would be to try to get to grips with those issues and any other issues which residents give, bring to me and, and deal with those. More generally, I would try to change the way in which the councillor interacts with the communities. I think the problem at the moment is, most of the time, people don't hear anything of their county councillor. People don't really take much interest in the county council because they, when they think of the council, they think of the district council. But the county is actually providing the major services and people are not being informed about the very, very serious issues which are arising at the county level. They're not being told about the crisis in adult social care, for example, and the way in which that interacts with the health crisis. And our existing county councillors simply aren't keeping people posted and they aren't involving them in these issues. They are confining themselves often to road issues which are important but are not all that the county does. And so I would like the county councillor to be an active person who engages. That's what I would be doing. If you'd like to know more about my campaign, go to my website, Seaton and Collison Matters, seatonmatters.org, or uh, contact me by telephone on 07972 760 254. I look forward to hearing from you.